Last Christmas Eve day, at noon, I was on my front porch, dressed somewhat like I am now, uh, with a wool-tailored jacket, my little gloves, and my diamonds. And uh, my suitcase was filled with food, and uh, it was rising cinnamon dough bread for Christmas morning, and figgy pudding ready, and I had, in the other hand, a bag full of sable fish. I was going to make sable fish with uh, Japanese Waldorf salad for Christmas Eve dinner. And I'm standing there with all my food on my front porch, bawling my eyes out. Because my ride, who was supposed to take me from Vancouver to Kamloops, did not show up. No, Murray, the little rideshare Kijiji boy. <laughs> Murray, wherever you are, Father Christmas is going to get you. He didn't show up. So I, I called everyone I knew, I went on Twitter, I went on Facebook, I, I went back on Craigslist and anything else I could find, planes, trains, automobiles, I couldn't find anything that would get me to Anita's house in time for dinner. And uh, just when I started to think about hitchhiking, I get a phone call. Hello? Hi, this is Dave, are you still looking for a ride? D Dave who? Oh, I'm, I'm Dave, I'm, I'm a flooring guy. Uh, I saw your ad and I'm going all the way to Sas uh, Saskatchewan and I'm happy to drop you off in Kamloops. The only thing is I have to run a few errands and then, and then we can hit the road. I said, okay, what kind of errands? Well, actually, this is where you can, you can come in handy. <laughs> I said, okay. He said, I'm just gonna pack up my tools and then I have to pack up my apartment and then we'll just uh, hit the road. And <laughs> if you help me pack up my apartment, then we can get on the road faster. And I thought, Christmas Eve, the last thing I want to do is clean some guy's apartment, I don't know, Dave the flooring guy, but I don't have a choice, so I say, okay, and I trade my little gloves for rubber gloves, and Dave pulls up in his big white construction van with a big U-Haul in the back, and uh, hops out, he's this big, muscled, handsome, flashing Métis, good looks guy, right, bald, and uh, ripped jeans, and uh, I hop into the cab, and in the cab is uh, three different phones, obviously a workaholic, this guy, and a CD of Metallica, cigarettes, and about 20 uh, Rockstar and Red Bull cans empty. <laughs> and that's when I notice Dave is a bit jittery. <laughs> And his eyes are bloodshot. And he said, yeah, a guy quit on me at the last minute. And I had to do this big flooring job all by myself. And I haven't slept for five days straight. I'm going to stop for a coffee. And I think, oh my God, I'm going to die. Just about that time, one of his phones rings. And it's his girlfriend, Melody. And uh, she says, Dave, where are you? How are you? And he goes, babe. I finished the job myself. I did it. She goes, you couldn't have. How did you possibly do that? I did it. I said I'd be home for Christmas, babe, and I'm going to make it home for Christmas. And she said, oh, my God. I'm going to get Dave under the tree for Christmas, the best Christmas present ever. <laughs> and, of course, I can hear this whole intimate conversation because it's over speakerphone. So we drive to God knows where in Burnaby to his apartment where I'm supposed to help him clean up a little, and I open the door, and this place is fully lived in. I mean, there's clothes, there's furniture, there's food in the fridge, there's condiments, there's, there's uh, toiletries, everything. And uh, the only moving thing he's done is unplugged his TV. He comes in with a couple of boxes and his face is like a glazed donut. He's just looking around, stunned. And he says, okay, I, I want my TV and, and my clothes and the rest, just do what you can. And phew, he's gone. He leaves me in his apartment by myself. <laughs> what am I going to do? I have no idea. And I phoned Anita and I said, I'm not going to make it for dinner. Uh, she said, when, when are you going to make it? I said, don't wait up. And I just start, you know, packing. It's very intimate to pack for somebody, you know, with socks and underwear and trying to decide what stays and goes. I mean, really, how do I know what's pre precious, right? I'm squeezing out shampoo bottles and sorting things in the fridge. And uh, three hours in, my cousin calls and says, hey, Chi, I got off work a couple of days early. I'm surprised. Uh, I'm going to drive home. Do you need a lift? I can pick you up wherever you are and drop you off in Kamloops. And I looked around me and I thought, I could escape right now. I could just take off. And then I saw a little pink bobby sock underneath Dave's bed. And I thought, that's the girlfriend's little sock. And I said, Jamie, you know, if I take off now, this guy's never going to get home for Christmas. And worse, probably he's so tired, he's going to try to drive the whole way himself and 
drive off some cliff somewhere, so I better stay and help this guy out. And he goes, who? I said, long story. <laughs> So I hung up the phone, and then I decided, okay, I'm going to roll up my sleeves. I'm going to become the monster minute maid of delight wonder pants woman here. <laughs> and I just take on the whole place. I'm just uh, emptying, emptying uh, cereal boxes and cleaning up jars. I did, actually, and not just for tonight. It's true. I recycled everything in the house. <laughs> And I uh, undid the furniture as best as I could, and I packed up all his clothes and everything. Five hours later, he shows up, and the place is done. And he can't believe it. I can't believe it either, actually. And uh, his eyes well up with tears, and he, he kind of goes, and he says, you did it. I, I can't believe you actually did it all. And I said, yes, I did, Dave. Let's pack up the U-Haul and go. So we did. We packed up the U-Haul and uh, headed on the road. I drove. <laughs> And uh, on the way, he explained to me a little bit about his life. He was uh, raised as an orphan, actually, in the prairies. And when he was 15 years old, he, he left for the big city and started apprenticing for another flooring guy and now runs his own business. And I realized, you know, as he talks, this isn't some crazy dude. This is a really nice guy who was in a, a tough spot, and I was so happy to help him out. And just at that point, phone rings. It's Melody, the girlfriend. And he goes, guess where we are, babe? I oh, know where you are. Where are you, Dave? Oh, we're driving on the coca Hall. I'm coming home. I'm going to make it just like I said I would. Oh, what did you do with all your stuff, Dave? How could you possibly do it? Well, I had a little help from my friend, Lucia. Who? Long story. <laughs> And she goes, what about your, your sofa and your bed, Dave? Oh, I, I didn't get those in. Oh, Dave, your bed. Honey, what's the use of a bed if you're not in it? Aww. He said, I can always buy more furniture, but I can't buy Christmas with my family. Oh, Dave. And again, hearing this all over speakerphone, <laughs> I yell out, he made the right decision, Melody. It was an ugly sofa anyway. <laughs> I drive four hours to Kamloops while he sleeps like a rock. And we get to Anita's, and she wraps her arms around me in her house coat, giggling. And um, Dave gives, gives me a big bear hug and says, thank you so much. And I, I said, yeah, we really helped each other out. So I guess that's what the season's all about, eh? And uh, Anita drew me in, and uh, we had a little glass of wine and laughed over the adventures. And uh, 14 hours later, I got a little bleep on my phone. It's a text. It says... I made it. Merry Christmas. Love, Dave. Thank you. Lucia Frangioni. Beautiful. Beautiful.